Hello and welcome to Science with Mrs. Blackburn. We've been talking about the scientific method and how that process allows us to learn new things about the world around us. Now today we're going to focus on one particular piece of the scientific method, the experiment. After this video, you should be able to describe the different parts of an experiment, discuss what factors make a reliable experiment, and explain why properly designing an experiment is so important. So, just to review, remember that the scientific method begins with a question or observation. Then, after some background research, you will make a hypothesis. Remember, this is your prediction or what you think will result from your experiment. Next, you will design and conduct your experiment. More on this in a minute. Then you will analyze your data, draw conclusions, and share what you learned with others. So, back to the experiment. When we talk about designing an experiment, this means that scientists carefully decide how they will conduct their experiment to get the most reliable results. Here's where variables come into play. Now, a variable is something in an experiment that is subject to change. You've probably heard this word before. When a person says something varies, they mean that it changes. Like if you ask me what my favorite food is, I might say I like various types of food, or my favorite varies from day to day. And when you get down to it, experiments are all about change. The changes that the person doing the experiment makes and the changes they will watch for. For example, if you were doing an experiment to see how different brands of laundry detergent perform at getting out grass stains, you would mu try multiple types of laundry detergent. In other words, you would change the type of laundry detergent you were testing. And with each type of laundry detergent you used, you would watch for changes in the amount of grass stains in the fabric. In science, each of these variables has a name. The variable that the experimenter changes is called the independent variable. And the variable or change that the experimenter watches for is called the dependent variable. One way to keep this organized in your mind is to think about the fact that the changes that a scientist will watch for an experiment will depend on what the experimenter did. And the changes that are watched for are called the dependent variables. So let's think about what this might look like in real life. Let's say that I'm sitting out in my backyard relaxing with a good book and an iced coffee when I notice that I'm getting lots of mosquito bites. I'm wearing bug spray, but it doesn't seem to be working. I begin to wonder what types of bug spray might work best, and I set out to do some background research. Notice how I'm going through the first few steps of the scientific method here. I read about different brands, ingredients, and even about natural plant-based bug sprays. Based on my background research, I make the hypothesis that if I use a plant-based bug spray, then I will get fewer mosquito bites when I sit in my backyard. So let's talk about how I might design this experiment. Now, it is important to note that this part of the scientific process is one of the most important because how the experiment is designed will determine if we even get reliable results at all. So, if I want to know which bug spray keeps the least bugs from biting me, I might want to test out maybe three different bug sprays by taking each of these steps. Number one, I would spray myself with the bug spray. Number two, I'd go outside and sit for one hour. And step three, I would count the number of bug bites I get during that time. Now remember, I would repeat the same process with each type of bug spray I used. So quick quiz break. In this experiment I just described, what is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable? Take a few moments to think about it. And here's the answer. The independent variable is the type of bug spray I'm using. Remember, this is what I, the experimenter, am changing about the experiment each time I do it. The dependent variable is the number of bug bites I get with each type of bug spray. It is the result I'm looking for and measuring in this experiment. A good way to think of this is that the number of bug bites I will get depends on the type of spray I'm gonna use. 
Pretty good experiment, huh? Well, in science, pretty good won't cut it. We want the most reliable results we can get. So let's look at some ways we can improve this experiment to make sure that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the number of bug bites I get is directly affected by the type of bug spray I'm using and not some other factor. The first thing I probably need to do is to actually measure the number of bug bites I would get just sitting outside for an hour with no bug spray at all. As uncomfortable as this may be for me, I would need to do this just to see if I may be better off using no bug spray at all. In fact, good experiments need situations like this where we test what happens to the unaffected or most plain situation. We call this a control group. Control groups let us know what happens when the scientist changes little or nothing at all. This is important because it lets you know if you would see any results even if you didn't change anything. So, here's a situation to think about. Let's say I decide to do all of my tests for this experiment in just one day. By the time I'm ready to do the test for my last bug spray, it's getting a little chilly out, so I decide to put a sweater on for the last test. What's the problem here? Take a moment to think about it. Done thinking? Now, this is a problem because the sweater might be another factor that I've added to keep me from getting bug bites. A good experiment will ensure that you only test one variable at a time. Anything that might get in the way of testing just that one variable, in this case, the type of bug spray, will need to say constant in the experiment. In fact, scientists actually call the factors that need to stay the same in an experiment constants. Take a few moments to think about other factors that I would need to keep constant in this experiment in order to ensure that the only thing affecting the number of bug bites I get would be the type of bug spray I used. So here are some other things that might affect my results if I don't keep them constant. The amount of bug spray I use, the time of day I did the experiment, what clothes I wear for each test, whether I'm eating or drinking anything during the test, this might attract more bugs, the weather during the test, the location. If I'm sitting in the grass, I might get more bug bites than if I sat in a chair on the porch. The shampoo, lotion, perfume, or other things I might have on my skin for each test, or anything else that you might have thought of that would have an effect on the experiment. It is so important to think about what you need to keep constant during an experiment. Because after all, the point of a scientific experiment is to see how your independent variable affects your dependent variable. Let's say during the part of the experiment where I test out the natural bug spray, I decide to put on some tanning lotion too while I'm at it to get a good tan while I'm out there. If I end up with a lot of bug bites at the end of that test, how do I even know if that happened because the bug spray didn't work or because the bugs thought that the tanning lotion was just delicious? The point is, I don't know. That's why experiments need to be closely controlled and constants need to be determined to make sure that we are only testing one variable at a time. One last thing, in order to further ensure that we're getting the most reliable results possible from this experiment, I would need to test out each type of bug spray more than one time. Now, as time consuming and uncomfortable as this would be for me, it would actually really help the experiment because I would have more data on each type of bug spray. I could even calculate the average number of bug bites I got while using each different spray. We call multiple tests of the same thing trials. Performing multiple trials of an experiment gives scientists one more way to make sure the results that they get are reliable and accurate. Once the entire experiment has been performed and all the data has been collected, in this case, all the different numbers of bug bites poor Mrs. Blackburn experienced, we would follow the rest of the steps of the scientific method, analyzing that data, drawing conclusions, and finally sharing our results. Well, that's it for this episode of Science with Mrs. Blackburn. I really hope you learned a lot today, and as always, thanks for watching.